start with Trey Wallace. Hey, man, good afternoon to you. Uh, this this whole offseason and, and getting to fall camp, I know that you stayed out in California a little bit longer uh, than maybe their, your teammates and whatnot, but what was that experience like being out west during everything that was going on and then finally being able to travel back to Knoxville, be around your teammates more? Uh, can you walk me through that? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, these are crazy times and, you know, these are probably not times we want to be in, but – uh, for me, it was a it was a good thing for me because I was able to be around my family a lot more. Um, being so far away from my family, I was able to spend time with them, um, watch my little brothers grow up. I worked them out. I worked my sisters out a lot more. Um, so I kind of grew a relationship with my family that I'm truly thankful for during this time of quarantine. Um, but you know, I was there, and coming back to Nashville, being able to see my my team after about three months, you know, I, I missed them. So. Being able to see the boys, work out with the boys again, um, I was happy. I was, I was juiced. Let's go to Rick Russo, followed by Vince Ferrar. Hey, Henry, good to talk to you again. Um, how fortunate do you guys feel as a team? You see what's happening to other conferences, other teams not being able to play. Um, how fortunate are you guys or feel to actually be out there in practice and, 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 and hopeful that you can keep moving forward and, and start a season on September 26th? Yeah, I mean, it's huge. It's a blessing to be able to um, have such a great medical staff um, that supports us, um, that wants the best for us, that knows, that keeps us updated every single day um, of what's going on and how this virus can spread and how we can prevent it from reaching our team. Um, so. Um, we feel really fortunate to be able to go out there and play some ball. You know, it's not just us. I know the entire world misses playing, misses football. So uh, we just got to take advantage of it. We got to do the right things. We got to be responsible. Um, Coach Pruitt tells us all the time, um, act like pros now. So we got to do the right things. Um, just be able to be responsible and, and do the things so that we can have a season. Vince? Hey, Henry, good to talk to you. Uh, for There's a lot of coaches that have talked about how those that are continuing on with football are the players are safer inside their facility and working on, on playing football. Can you, for people that maybe on the outside don't recognize what that is, can you give some examples of some of the things that help you guys feel safe, whether it's technology or you know, mask or, or whatever, that you can kind of share what it's like in terms of health and safety measures inside the facility? Uh, shoot. For, um, for a lot of players, um, and I can count myself in this, um, if we were to be able to go home, um, who knows what we would be doing. Um, we wouldn't be on a time schedule. We wouldn't be um, responsible to go to things and be held accountable to be able to do things on our own. Um, so we would probably be out um, doing things, traveling, um, probably doing something with our family that we shouldn't be doing um, here. You know what I mean? So um, being able to be here, um, having the medical staff <clears throat> and being able to have practice, um, know that your teammates are around you, counting on you to do the right thing um, day in, day out. Um, so a lot of people would go home and not have a safe environment to be in. You know what I mean? And you guys seen that all throughout Twitter. Um, and the social media that people um, want to be here. They want to be here. It feels like a safe environment. And I can speak that for myself, that I feel safe here. Um, I feel that the medical staff has done a tremendous job to be able to ensure my safety, and I, and I trust them with all that I got. We'll go Britt Hubs, followed by Mike Wilson. Henry, how normal has this week felt, and how relieving is that? Uh, how stressed has – the last few weeks, months of your guys' lives been? Can you give kind of a feel for that? Uh, shoot. You know, the past three months have just been, like, all over the place. Um, a lot of uncertainty. So to be able to come back this week and to be able to play ball, um, it gives us, like, a sense of normality. Um, we're out there balling like we always do on a daily basis. We're out there playing with each other. Um, so it feels good. It feels, it's a blessing to be able to be out there. Um, you know, I, I can't really put it into words on how it feels to be able to be out there and play some ball. Um, you just got to feel it. And, you know, if you were in our shoes, you would understand. As a follow-up, do, do you feel mentally behind or physically behind? Or do you feel like you're kind of where you need to be? Or even in some ways maybe mentally ahead with the OTAs? Where, where do you feel like you are football-wise right now? Uh, football-wise, um, Mentally wise, we did a great job as a team, um, as a defense and an offensive unit to be able to hold Zoom meetings 
while we were on quarantine. So we were on Zoom, um, getting the same film work in, um, holding each other accountable, making sure that everybody's camera was on, making sure that everybody was answering questions. Um, you know, we did a tremendous job. So mentally wise, I feel like we all did a great job. Um, we came in and got on day one install and we rolled from there. Uh, physically wise, you know, I feel like I did a good job being able to come back physically. Um, and I did, I think the team did actually a good job too. They came back stronger. Um, we came back working out with AJ and we did a really good job as a team um, being conditioned and being uh, physically strong. Mike? Henry, what's, uh, what's life been like so far without Daniel Batuli around? And what's the, the chemistry like between you and Q? Is there anything you guys did this, this offseason to kind of work on, on building you guys as a partnership now in the middle? Yeah, I mean, you know, me and Daniel Batuli had a, 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 brother, a brotherhood bond. Um, but, you know, that was last year. Um, it's time to focus on, you know, this year. And, you know, me and Q, I mean, and it's not only just me and Q, it's our whole entire LB room. Um, you know, we all came together as one. Um, we all know that we have to fill in the shoes of Daniel Batuli, so we all kind of put in that extra work, that extra time. Um, so it's not necessarily only two people. It's the entire LB room. Um, that The guys that we have in there were doing a tremendous job of kind of picking up the lack that, that Batuli left off with us. So, you know, now it's on to us to be able to carry that torch. As, as a follow-up, is, is that something you've kind of put on yourself, is taking those leadership shoes and leading everyone forward? Oh, yes, sir. Um, I feel like I could do a lot more. Um, I feel like since I was, um, I seen Batuli lead, I seen the way that he did things on and off the field. Um, he did everything right. So um, I just want to be able to do what he did. Um, you know, he, he showed me the ways and I just want to excel his expectations from now. We'll go to Jordan at WATE, followed by David Oven. Henry, I know in the spring you had talked about being excited that Coach Niedermeyer was making the transition to inside linebackers coach to, to kind of have a few practices with him under your belt. What's it like working with him directly and, and what does he kind of bring to that room? So if you know Niedermeyer, um, he's a real, real juiced guy. Um, he's excited about every single thing that we do. Um, so, you know, it's a blessing to be able to have him recruit me and have me as a coach because he hasn't changed. He's still the same president that, um, that I know and that I met since day one. Um, he's a really smart guy. He brings smarts to the table. He knows the schemes. He knows how a linebacker is supposed to be played. Um, so being able to have Niedermar there has been a true blessing. So um, one thing I love about him, he's, he brings that juice every single day. He wants the best out of us every single day, whether it be watching film on the field, running to the ball, um, the littlest things like our steps. You know, So it's a true blessing to have such a, a great coach like him. David? Uh, Henry, what would you make of the status of the, the inside linebacker group, and, and who do you expect to kind of see beside you most often this fall? Uh, shoot, I mean, that's not my question to answer. Um, I have no right to say who I want to be by beside me. Um, you know, you know we're, we're all players, and we're all here to ball. We're all here to play football. <clears throat> and I think, uh, like I told you guys before, our inside linebacker core group has done a great job going from – um, the older guys to the younger guys. Um, we've all done a tremendous job of playing, um, getting in that extra work. We, we were here about until 9 o'clock watching film yesterday as a unit. So, um, you know, that's not room for me to say anything about. But, you know, I know that whoever is in that game or whoever is playing in the game or in practice, I know that they're going to give it their all. I know that they're going to um, they're gonna know what they're doing. Thanks. We'll go to Austin Price followed by Blake. Henry, got two questions. You know a lot of guys that play in the Pac-12 how much have you talked to them since the decision came down, uh, you know, about the fact they wouldn't play and just, have, you know, what's the mood there for those kids that are that maybe some acquaintance or friends of yours? And then two, the coaches spent so much of last class, of the last recruiting class focused on getting you some help, getting Q some help, and getting that to be a much deeper room. When you look around the linebacker room now, how different is it as far as bodies and, and just, you know, the talent that's around you? Um, so to answer your first question, a lot of people in the Pac-12 that I know, um, they're pretty bummed, uh, to be honest with you. A lot, of, a lot of my family, I have a lot of family in the Pac-12, so um, just being able to talk to them, um, they also too want a season. They also too wanted to play, but, um, you know, that wasn't their call to make. So, uh, I mean, what they're doing now, they're probably working as hard as their butts off right now. Um, so when their season does time to come, when it's time for them to play, they're, they're going to excel. Um, to answer you, so can you repeat your second question again? 
Yeah, just uh, when you look around the room now, at the linebacker room, just talk about the depth in there. You know, there's a lot more bodies in there than there was a year ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of depth. Um, we got guys like Jeremy Banks in there. We got guys like Bryson Easton, um, Martavius French. We got Aaron Beasley, Solon Page. Um, so guys like that to be able to incorporate in the game, we all have our different skill sets. We all have our unique types of plays that we can do. Um, and we all know our strengths. So just to be able to have guys like that in the room makes us stronger as a unit. So um, we know that whoever's in the game, whoever's out there is going to do what they need to do. Blake? Hey, Henry. I uh, had two questions as well. Um, we, you mentioned Jeremy Banks. Uh, you know, since he's been back with the program, is, what's your observations been of, uh, you know, how he's, how he's carried himself, how he's doing? And then second question, you know, I know you guys had some positive tests after the 4th of July weekend, and Coach Pruitt said that was a, a learning experience for the team. Did, did players have any conversations about that or, or you know, any changes in, in how you guys conducted yourselves after the 4th? Yeah, um, Jeremy Banks, you know, that's, that's my guy. That's my brother right there. So, you know, we spent a lot of time together. Uh, he's grown, and with, um, we're here to support him. Everything that he does – um, we're here supporting him. We're here to help him grow. And, you know, Jeremy Banks has done a great job. He's a changed man. So um, he's on the field. He's helping us tremendously on the field. Um, you know, so it's a true blessing to have him out there with us. And as far as the July 4th having those positive tests, you know, we knew that coming back there was going to be some guys that tested positive. So um, we kind of just told each other after the 4th, be aware, be responsible, and act like pros, like Coach Pruitt would tell us all the time. Act like pros. Be a pro. Um, go out there and play. You're play. You want to play ball. So if you're going to go out there and try to, you know, ruin that for not only yourself but the entire team, um, it's not a smart thing to do. So, um, so we kind of just made a promise to each other that we're going to do the right thing all the time. So I, th I think we've been doing a, a pretty good job of that. We'll go to Eric Kane, followed by Luis Fernandez. Hey, Henry, um, for you and for everyone else, uh, kind of how, how different is it coming into this camp, a very experienced unit compared to last season? How comfortable are you guys uh, now coming into this new season, knowing the schemes and everything defensively for uh, Coach Ansley and Pruitt? Yeah, uh, we're doing a, our defensive unit. You know, we, we know what the coaches expect now, um, and we also know what we can do. Um, we know that's kind of the biggest thing. Um, we're trying to be – the, the coaches on the field. We know the knowledge that the coaches know. Um, so now it's just on us to be able to go out and execute it and be able to make the calls. You know, we know all the plays in the playbook, but it's now trying to focus on the little details that we have um, and just to be able to execute. That's the biggest thing. You, you know what you're doing, but just go out there and execute now. Lewis? Hey, Henry. Uh that weekend where it seemed like the college football world was was falling apart a bit and some of the conferences, the rumors first started to swirl, uh, you were one of the first Tennessee players to tweet out, we want to play. What was that weekend like for you? And it may seem silly, but why tweet out that statement? Why make that known? Um, shoot, you know, we've been through so much. Um, the past three months, we've done so much to be able to get to the point where we're at now. Um, so a lot of people has felt that way, has been that way for a while. Um, so we, for me, it was, um, I put so much work in, um, done so much to get to the point where I'm at now, to be able to come back to campus, to be able to feel confident in the medical staff, which they've done a tremendous job of um, keeping us updated. But um, it's, it's a sign of normality for us um, to be able to play ball, to be able to, be around the people that we love, you know what I mean? To be able to um, do the thing that we love is be able to come out here and play ball. So um, that's, that's kind of the biggest reason why it was for me. Thank you. We'll go back to Vince and then we'll go to Matt Ray. Henry, talk about where your body's at right now. Did you add weight? Did you lose weight, lose any body fat, anything like that in terms of diet? What, what's different or improved about your body this year? Uh, my whole goal throughout this offseason, I wanted to lose about um, 10 to 12 pounds. So I was leaving. I left when we were on quarantine. I was about 240. Um, I came back when 228, 225. So that's kind of where I want to be. Um, I wanted more lean mass, more muscle. <clears throat> and I feel like 
uh, AJ has put us through a, a great job, um, a great workout while we're at home to, for us to do. Um, he sent us workouts every single day um, for guys that didn't have weights, for guys that did have weights. So uh, being able to follow his program, um, you know, it really changed my body and really changed um, the way I'm playing now, um, being able to move faster. Quick follow-up, what's the difference between uh, AJ and Coach, Coach Fitz before that? Uh, I mean, they're both great coaches. You know, we're, we're blessed as a Tennessee um, program to have two great coaches, you know what I mean? To be able to have coaches that want the best for you every single day, um, that want you to do better every single day in and out. Um, but the difference really, uh, I mean, I can't really tell you a difference. Honestly, they're, they're, I love both of them. So there's no one better than one another, um, in my opinion, because they both made me or honed me into the player that I am now. You know what I mean? So um, it's a blessing to have guys like that in the program. Matt? Henry, Coach Pruitt mentioned how he's emphasized mental health throughout this process. What's his approach been like for you guys, and what's been the biggest takeaway for you, for you from how he and his staff have handled your return to football, especially with all these safety measures in place? Uh, can you repeat that again, Matthew? I'm sorry. Yeah, um, Coach Pruitt mentioned a few times how he's emphasized mental health for you guys for, throughout this process. What's his approach been like in handling that? And what's been your biggest takeaway from that? Um, his biggest approach in that is if you need help, say something. You know, we have the support staff here at Tennessee that, that will help you no matter what you're going through. Um, and he, he also tells us to lean on our brothers. Um, everybody here, um, teammates, the teammates that we have, um, he tries to tell us to lean on one another and come to the staff, come to him. You know, he, he's going to have his door wide open for, for us whenever we need him. So um, he's done a great job of having the support staff here for us whenever we need them. And our teammates has done a tremendous job too. Last question, Patrick Brown, and then we'll get Eric in here. Henry, you had a, a pretty good freshman season. I'm wondering when you went back and watched the film and uh, kind of reviewed your own individual play, what were some of the things that you said, hey, th these are areas I can improve, and, and what have you been trying to focus on going into the season to make yourself an even better linebacker? Uh, getting stronger, um, being able to shut off blocks. Uh, that's kind of what I was mainly focused on this offseason, to be able to uh, put more muscle on and to be able to um, practice on my sh uh, shedding blocks off. Um, I want to be able to engage the lineman and throw them off as quick as I can, as I can and get to the ball carrier. So um, that's kind of one, one thing I'm focusing on. And, that's a flaw that I've seen in my game. And I mean, I have many flaws. So i um, trying to enhance my game throughout the entire season. And to follow up, you, you kind of talked about being a leader for this defense. You're just a sophomore. Do you feel like a sophomore? Or do you feel like you, uh, because you've got so many younger guys at that linebacker position that are kind of following your lead, do you feel like you're a veteran even at this point of your career? Uh, I mean, I feel like a sophomore. Uh, but I just feel like I have to um, play a bigger role now. I have to be able to lead the guys, um, no matter who it is. It, age doesn't matter when it's time to be a leader. Um, you got to be a leader, not only on the field, but off the field, to be able to do the right things all the time. So, I mean, I wouldn't say I feel like a veteran. I wouldn't say I feel old, but I feel like that I have to, to lead. Now I have to do a better job of setting an example um, and to be able to confront guys when they're not doing the right things.